It is Nato Quintana today who conquers the goal and goes out the winner. He has done everything asked of him by his team today. Terrific, terrific win. Hey everybody, Steve Schlanger, Christian Vandevel. This is In the Saddle, where we cover some of the hot button issues in the world of cycling, some of the major topics you're talking about in social media, online. These are the subjects that keep you up at night, that you just can't forget about the things that drive you crazy, Christian Vandevel. And I know you, but, you stay up at night. I do, I do. <laughs> I, need, I need help. <laughs> There's a couch back there. We'll start therapy momentarily. One of the issues that you've been talking about for a few years now is Nairo Quintana. It was, what, half a dozen years ago that this young Colombian burst onto the scene and many people thought that he would be the next Tour de France winner. He would unseat Chris Froome. He would be the next big thing in the sport. But last I checked on his bio here, has not won the Tour. Yep. And some people say that the window is closing, that he's had his shot, he's not going to win. Others say that it's just a matter of time, that things haven't broken his way, hasn't had the proper luck, and he'll still get there. My question to you is, will Nairo Quintana ever win the Tour de France? Well, I mean, I hate to be too harsh, and I think it's a little bit ridiculous to say that somebody's never going to win any a race in particular in the history of his life. But, um, no, I, I think that it's the chances of him winning are very small. So I'm going to say no. I mean, I, I think if, if I'm going to bet on this, whether he's going to win or not, or he's going to take unseat Chris Froome this year, for example, or the next year, or if ever, I'd say no. I mean, I don't think his attributes for the Tour de France are as perfect as they are for the example of the Tour de that he brought up in the Giro d'Italia and the Vuelta España. Well, he has won the Giro. He has won the Vuelta. Yep. He's won some major stage races beyond that as well. So, you know, given that, don't you give him a few more years? I mean, don't you give him another chance? I mean, how do you all of a sudden write him off at this point in his career? No, I mean, uh, of course. My, my, this goes against the grain of myself. I mean, 100%. Like, I always give everyone the benefit of the doubt, and I, I really do hope that he wins the, 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 the proves me wrong that he wins the Tour de France. But um, just the way that he's been racing the last couple of years, uh, I feel like he's not as sharp as he was. I feel he's more of a, a diesel. I feel like he, if we were going to race a Paliocla, for example, 36 miles long, long climb, that, yeah, he would probably scold everyone. But that's not the way the Tour de France is race these days. Um, the Giro d'Italia has longer climbs that are short and steep at times, but really long. I mean, they have much more climbing in general. Same thing goes for the Volta Espana. Um, the Tour de France doesn't have the amount of climbing that these races do. And I think that he needs more climbing to really change and turn the tables from the, the time trials in the flats. He has been second at the Tour on yep. two occasions. And one of those times, remember the climb they went over where everybody kind of took a breath for a second and he reached down for a water bottle and right at the moment he did that, Froome took off. He attacked and it was one of the decisive moments of that race. Mm -hmm. So you think about that now and you ask yourself, boy, just grabbing for a water bottle may have cost him the Tour. If he was that close, how can he not win? Yeah, I mean, and then that's Chris attacking on the descent as well. He's going up and over a climb and attacking a, a descent, which was you never would see. But I don't see those things happening from Nairo, and that's but, one of the but reasons. But my point is, maybe it's a learning process. Maybe he adds these small moments up, and then yeah. finally it comes together. How old him. is he now? He, he is, is 29 years old. Yep. Just, just turned 20 now. Yep. He just had Guy, a, guys have won the Tour in their 30s, plenty. No, you're right. I mean, if, if you're looking at all the statistics, I just don't think that... Really, I feel like he's getting almost a little bit slower at times for how fast he is as a climber, especially at the end. And I feel like those guys need to be so sharp these days. Um, his time trial is lacking a little bit. He's actually not horrible, for, especially because he's considering he weighs 130 pounds soaking wet. Um, but really, I, I just don't see it as much. I, I see these guys changing a little bit. I see Tom Dumoulin, for example. I think he, he's a better example of someone I would put more money on to win the Tour de France before Nairo Quintana. The guys like Garen Thomas. Um, two years ago, we would have never thought that well, Garen Thomas would ever won the Tour de France. Right. I mean, Dumoulin has had bad luck. He's had mechanicals over yep. the years. I mean, I, I've personally talked to him after stages where he's been despondent. Yep. Um, so, I mean, these things happen. I mean, bad luck happens. And, you know, with Quintana, same thing. I mean, if not for a few issues here or there, I mean, the guy would be standing on the top step of the podium in the Champs Elysees. Yeah. So, you know, get in line, man. Given that, yeah, but given that, I, you know, I get in line, but you're but talking about I, a line. I've been that, on the ground that I've been, you know. Well, you're talking about it? a line that forms behind a lot of 50 year old guys, though. Yeah. I mean, this guy's 29. I mean, True. he still has some years. No, it, it has the potential. Yeah. Look, yeah. it goes against everything 
in my soul to say that he can't win the Tour de France. That's, right. that's a ridiculous statement. Yeah. But I think that the chances of him winning are slim. Yeah, it's just, it's a will he versus can he. Yeah. I mean, sure, he has the potential, he has the talent. Yeah. Um, he has all of the, you know, the attributes, but yeah. it's a matter of will he. Yeah, and, and not only that, the team. You know, would he, would he have already won the, to, the, the Tour if he was on Team Sky? Possibility, a very strong one at that. I mean, let's say that he, he might even be a better climber than Chris Froome, especially when he has four amazing horses pulling for him at the bottom of every climb. So if he doesn't, never has that, he never has that leadership, doesn't have the leadership for the training, psychological stance, which we were kind of alluding to before, um, grabbing a water bottle, not thinking of, or, or even last year, for example, in 2018, he crashed or flatted, double flatted 100 meters before the 3K to go. Get across the 3K. I mean, that wherewithal that comes with a little bit of age, of course, but also the team. Well, speaking of the team, what about his Movistar squad? I mean, they do have some firepower with the yeah. likes of Landa and Alejandro Valverde. I mean, yeah. if they get it right, I mean, they've also had their issues themselves, though. But if they get it right, I mean, they can pace them on the climbs. They can get them into position. They can also team time trial when that's yep. necessary. So they've got the horses. Oh, no, no. There's no doubt about that. I think that it comes from... Uh, the front office, and I and I, I love Senor Enzue, and Enzue is like he's one of my heroes. But I think he's too nice sometimes. I, I really think that he needs to be a little bit more direct, and I think that he needs to to really be direct with who is the leader, and there has to be one leader, not three or four. Like we go into the tour, that, that's that's ridiculous. There, there's no way you could win the Tour de France in this day and age with all these leadership roles. But I think a lot of it goes to not only Nairo, but his team. So there, there's a lot of different avenues of which way you want to direct the blame. You know, I, I do agree with you overall that I don't think he will win the Tour. I know he has the skills to do it. I don't think it will happen, though. And it, for me, it comes down to what's happened in some of these races where I've talked to the team before and after certain stages that were supposed to be perfect stages for Quintana, and mm. things have not gone his way. And the team had no answers. Yeah. His directors were saying, I don't yeah. know. We, we, we don't know what happened. I mean, we, we, we're talking to him. We're trying to find out. We're talking with the doctors. We just don't know. And to me, that's kind of a sign of maybe not as mentally strong as some of the other riders. Yeah. Not having that killer instinct that a guy like Froome has had over the years. I mean, do you see that mental aspect playing into maybe him not winning? I don't see that that mental aspect. I also I see more of like the bullheadedness, I think, once in a while and not really wanting to conform and really want to see it his way. Um, that's what I saw in the Peloton when I was racing with him. Um, I mean, the, the kid is about this big, like I said, 130 pounds soaking wet, but he, he, he thinks in, in his skin he's, he's like King Kong. So, I mean, I think that has a little bit to it, maybe a little bit of machismo at times. Um, but, he, I mean, I don't know. I really, I don't know enough about the team. I don't know about, about the team dynamics. One thing I will do, I will, will know or do know, looking from 40,000 feet, is I do not like the way that Movistar comes and looks at the Tour de France. I don't like having so many chefs in the kitchen. I really would like to see just one all-and-out leader going forward. All right, so we do agree. Nairo Quintana, in our minds, will most likely never win the Tour de France. But one thing this guy has never been accused of, not having machismo. No. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> no tengo.